And what I've done is I've laid the wings out here to get a, get a rough gauge as to how I'm going to position things. And really, eyeballing it, if you, you're used to looking at other aircraft that fly, as long as you make it fairly similar, chances are it will also fly. So I'm going to say, OK, the tail should be about this long, and the nose can be about this long. Move that over so you can see, about that long. And I'm going to make a fuselage that will join these together and give me somewhere to put my little Cox motor on the front. Or if you're going electric, you can put your little outrunner or your inrunner or whatever you got on the front. So now I have to basically design the fuselage. How I'm going to make this the bottom. This will be the bottom. Of the so we're looking down. This is the bottom of the fuselage. How wide do I want to make it? Well, I don't need to make it very wide because all our radio gear is quite small. So what I'll do is I'll just mark out what I think is a reasonable width of fuselage. Right, I have laid out what I think is a reasonable sort of plan view of the fuselage. I hope you can see that on the camera because it's pretty... Uh, Pretty difficult to, to see, I think. But anyway, uh, whoops. Oh, oh no, just, the plane has crashed and it hasn't even left the building board. I will just measure it out so you can see what, what we've got here. It's actually, um, the whole thing is, I've measured it out, is 18 and a half inches long. And what I've done is I've tapered it to two flutes wide at the tail. So it's just two flutes wide. So the center line, it's, it's um, one and a half inches wide. So it's three quarters of an inch to the center line. So I just marked the center line here. And the center line there, and then uh, nine. In what is it? What did I do? It? Nine inches. Nine inches from the very back. I've drawn another vertical, and I've just tapered it in from there. So that's where our model will taper from nine inches from there. And then this is all constant width all the way up the front. So you'll see it better when I've cut it out. I'll cut it out now, and you can have a look. So there is our fuselage. Now, hopefully, if I put the wings on and the tail, you can see how this is all coming together quite nicely. There, our little biplane is shaping up. I'll put the wing back about there, shaping up quite nicely. Now, of course, we have to have a top to the fuselage as well, so we can use this to mark out another piece exactly the same. And then we'll have make some sides up so we can put it all together. Now I have two fuselage bits, one top, one bottom. They'll obviously go together like this. I've got to put some sides on. So we have to look at the profile of the model now. What do we want to, what do we want it to look like from the side? Well, I'm just going to basically make it like this so that it uh, tapers down at the back. A little bit and pretty much straight all the way along so to do that i need to get back to my piece of core flute and have i got enough of this white one left i don't know maybe not maybe not in fact probably not so i'm gonna to have to switch to a new color no i'll keep, stick with red for the fizzler shall i have i got enough of this red this is the great thing about building models like this you can just mix and match just use what you've got and core flute is such a readily available material you can get it almost anywhere so um, old signs wander around the neighborhood take down the old real estate signs hope nobody notices anyway i will now draw the outline of my fuselage this time because i know my ballpoint pen doesn't show up very well i've used a big black felt marker so hopefully you can now see the lines that our fuselage will make up now i've put the little i had a tape nine inches from the tail i started to taper the bottom and that's also where i started to taper the width of the fuselage so at the nine inch point from the tail it'll all start to taper down to give us a nice slender tail all constant width from that point on so it's easy easy building so i've done one i will now cut that out use it to do the other side as a template just a word about cutting these diagonal lines that sort of intersect the flutes at an angle it can be quite tricky with a modding knife because it tends to want to wander off every time it hits one of the flutes so you can actually drag out your scissors if you find it hard to do it with a modeling knife and as long as you're careful it will crumple up the edges a bit but not that much so just take it slowly and use a bit of patience you've got to bend the material away as you cut it and sometimes this produces an actually a better result than using your modeling knife there we have it we now have oh, if i get the other one off the floor we have two fuselage sides and two tops and well, one top and one bottom and these will all go together very easily just trust me on this these will all go together nicely like so and eventually they'll turn into a lovely fuselage that we can mount our wing and tail on simple as but we've got to make some little formers to go inside here so that it adds a bit of rigidity very simple little rectangles that we just glue in here just to hold these sides apart while we're gluing the top and bottom on. Let's do that. We can mark out the formers, and in the case of the formers, we want the flutes going crossways, so it's re re uh, 
resistant to compression, so it won't crush. Now, they're going to, of course, be one and a half inches wide, same width as our fuselage on the inside, and they're going to be two inches tall, less two layers of core flute, because we're going to be putting the core flute uh, in there. So eighth inch, so it'll be one and three quarter inches in height. So that's one and a half by one and three quarter to make up our little formers. And we just cut those up with our modeling knife, and we really want about three of those. Here are the three formers I've cut, and of course these will go in here like this, like so, to hold the fuselage sides apart. And of course one of them will also act as the firewall right up the front where we're going to mount our motor. And we actually may end up putting a bit of plywood on there, I'm not sure, we'll just see how it goes. So what we have to do now is glue, start doing some gluing, hooray at last, you're getting into the gluing. And we need to glue some of these formers in place. Now, one of them is obviously going to go at the 9 inch from the tail mark, so we can mark that on our piece of plastic. Measure back 9 inches from the tail, and that is exactly there. Put a little mark on there. And the same on the other one. Well, we actually don't need it on the other one because we're actually going to, going to put this, glue it to the bottom to start with. Now, when you're gluing core flute, very important with your hot glue, some core flute has a kind of a waxy substance on it that doesn't take glue well so you need to clean it turpentine mineral turpentine will do it or many other kinds of solvent just take off this waxy top that will stop your hot glue from sticking to the fuselage i'm going to give these a bit of a clean up and then i'm going to glue them what i'm going to use to clean this is just some brake cleaner this is crc brake cleaner it has a nice little spray nozzle and you can use some paper towels like this just take off the paper towel and spray the brake cleaner on the paper towel. Don't spray it on the plastic, otherwise you make a huge mess. And then you can just give your plastic a bit of a wipe where you intend to glue it. In fact, because we're going to be gluing along the sides, just give the whole damn thing a wipe down to get off any of that layer of waxy substance that stops glue from sticking to this lovely core flute material. In fact, give all your stuff a bit of a spray while you've got the can out. Give it all a wipe down, get off that horrible waxy stuff, even if there isn't waxy stuff on yours, I mean, you'll have nice clean stuff to work with now, won't you? And I'll give the fuselage sides a wipe as well because we're going to be gluing them. And remember to wipe down the whole length. Now, worth noting, see this got a bit of a crease in it? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not going to make a whole lot of difference unless it's really, really badly creased. And that's one of the reasons I've gone to the, the wider fuselage rather than the profile because it's a bit more forgiving if your material isn't that good, but you can go down to your local sign shop and buy core flute, or I think some hardware stores even sell it at quite low prices. So you can build a lot of planes from one sheet of core flute, and it can actually work out as the cheapest building material you will ever use. Right, there's my rag. It's all dirty from the waxy substance on the core flute. Oh yes, I better do another one. Better clean the little formers because they're also going to get the hot glue treatment. So give them a good old wipe all around the edge. Although, fortunately, what we're going to be doing basically is gluing along the edge of these formers. So the glue gets up into the, the flutes and makes a very, very strong connection. It's really good. It's kind of like ingrained balsa wood, really. Except cheaper and more readily available. Because balsa is so damn expensive now. Oh, almost given up building models with balsa. Too pricey. Okay, now of course I wiped off the marks I'd made on the fuselage at the 9 inch mark. So I'm going to have to put those on again on the fuselage bottom. In fact, uh, this will actually be the fuselage top, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to build it upside down. At 9 inches I put a little mark, if I can see it, because I'm old and I need glasses. There we go. Now I'm going to glue this former in place there with my hot glue gun. So I better plug it in and warm it up. Here's something interesting. I just discovered that I can put my glue gun down like that. I always thought this little wire thing was a hook to hang it on the edge of the bench, but no, it's actually a little rest. I can put my gun like that, and no doubt it will drip hot glue all over my bench and ruin it. So I won't put it like that. I'll hang it on the side, like I always do. After much delay, my hot glue gun is now warm. This is a Bostic gun. It should be really good, but it's actually pretty crappy, to be totally honest. Uh, now, I just position my little piece of core flute where I want it, and then I run down across the bottom with a bead of my... Actually, what I'll do is I'll put it on the former itself, put the hot glue on the former like this, see that? Plenty of hot glue, it's cheap stuff. And then I just plonk it where I want it, on the bottom of the fuselage. There we go, try and keep it square. Remember, none of this is really critical because this is just a simple plastic aeroplane. 
It's not a, a fabulously accurate scale model of anything. So now having glued that to my finger, um, I'll just leave that there to go off. The problem is really hot weather here at the moment and the hot glue takes ages to cool down. So end up uh, waiting a long time. I haven't quite got that square, but I can move it around until it, until it goes hard. It's great stuff, hot glue, hot glue. love it. Um, I'm going to put another former up here, but further along to keep the fuselage wide. If we don't put formers at regular intervals, it'll get a bit squishy in the middle. So I'll put another former here and I'll just repeat the process. Just put a bit of hot glue on my former and then stick it on the fuselage. See, I'm old and I shake a lot. Never mind. That's life. I go another former about there. It's actually quite hot on my fingers, that glue. That's causing me a little bit of pain, but in the interest of making sure you get a good video, I will not squeal girly screams. I will just tough it out. There we go. Two formers in place. Now, I'm not going to put the third former on yet because I may have to adjust the length of the nose to get the center of gravity right for this model. I'm not sure how much it's going to weigh with the motor on the front and where I put the battery. So by leaving the nose quite long at this stage gives me the flexibility to add that um, or reduce that length later if I need to bring the center of gravity back. Now, I have our fuselage sides here and they can go on now. We'll put those, see how these will fit. I'll do the other side first so you can see it. Here we go. Fuselage side will run down here like so. And that will give us a nice uh, thing. And now what I need to use here is actually some of those little clips. Have you seen those little plastic clips that you get? I'll find them. They're in my other room. Hang on a second. Here they are. They're just these little like clothes clips, but they're really handy when you're building models because they can hold stuff together and your fingers don't get really, really tired. So what we now have to do is basically line up the two fuselage sides. And well, let's see how the bottom is. Here we go. The other side. We do them both at once because we make sure that it keeps the plane nice and true. And here we go. It's going to be a little bit of a job. In fact, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one side on first, just in the between the two formers there, so that it gives me a reference. So I have to make sure it curves around and stops at the right place. There we go. And now I'm going to mark with my little pen where those formers line up so that I can put it back in the right same place when I go to glue it together because I'm going to have to load up the formers with glue and then push the side on. In fact, what I'm going to do to make life simple for everybody, and I should have thought of this before, is I'm going to put the side down and I'm going to put the bottom on the side. So I know I can hold it there just for a few moments until that glue goes off. So let's give that a crack. I'll load up the sides with glue. Fortunately, because this glue takes so long to go off in the warm climate, it gives me time to do the job properly. And I have that there. I can bring this down here and this down here. Now, obviously, it's not gluing the bottom at this stage. We've got a piece along the bottom of the fuselage which won't be glued. And we run our glue gun in afterwards to get glue in there. So I'm just putting this on here. Now I have to hold it until it goes cold which is the downside of warm days and hot glue. So I'll probably cut this piece out of the video. You'll never see it. Right, that side is glued on just by the formers at this stage, as you can see. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a bead of hot glue in here along between the, the sides to make sure that it's nice and glued, and that's where the hot gun, I should do it the other way so you can see I know, but I'm just in a hurry. You'll have to believe that I've put hot glue in there, because if I hold it up and have a look, can I see hot glue? No, I didn't actually, didn't pull the trigger hard enough, so I will do it so you can see. And then we can both be sure that I've done it properly. Here we go. Squeeze in a bead of hot glue. Give it a bit of a wiggle, just to make sure it gets in, and then just hold it down again until that hot glue goes off. It's now very, very strong. Once that's gone hard, it will take heaven and earth to move this piece of plastic. And yes, it's burning my finger again. And now I'm going to put on the other side. So I load up 
this whole section with hot glue, the formers, and just this little piece along here, because I'll do it really quick and hopefully I can get it done before the hot glue goes cold. Here we go, loading it all up. You can use plenty. Here we go. Now I take my other side and I position it so that it's in the right place, one hopes. Just pop it on. Ooh, ah, hot. Hot, hot, hot. That's why it's called hot glue, isn't it? Ow, stuck my finger. Right, now I just hold that for a moment or two until it all goes hard-ish. Kind of try and make sure it's lined up perfectly. Or as perfect as you can get it, because as I said, this is not really a big deal if it's all a bit crooked. You'd be surprised what will fly if you throw it hard enough. Here we go. As you can see, it's starting to look a bit more like a model. We've got the uh, boxy shape to the fuselage that so many people like. Now we've got to bring the two tail sections together. And I've made a mistake. See, they're not quite the same length. I've got it wrong. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Because this is really, we just snip that off. Piece of cake. That's why this is such a fun thing to do because you can't really get it wrong. You can just get it a little less than right. So now I will glue the back section here, glue the tape, put some hot glue along here and then pull it together with my trusty little clip or hold it with my hands so that we get that bit sorted. Do one side at a time I think otherwise the glue probably will go cold before I get it all together. So let's do this side for a start. See if I can get this, I should push that down a bit. Push this down. Run the hot glue down here and let's get going. Need to have lots of hot glue sticks so you don't run out. Although you end up, don't end up using that much hot glue really when you're doing this. It's quite surprising how little you need. Run this down here. Ah, oh, oh gee whiz, that is a bit warm. Ah. Maybe you can wear gloves when you're doing this and it will save you a bit of the burning that I seem to be experiencing for some strange reason. Here we go. Hot, hot, hot. Right. I'll just hold that. I should have put my clip on there, but uh, who can be bothered? I'll just hold this while the glue goes off. Ouch, ouch. Here we go. Just make sure. Try and get it flush as you can. Flush as you can. Always put the extra glue in later if you need to, can't you? Hey? Oh, here we go. Now I've just put the glue on here, so I'll push the other side down. Oh, ah, hot again. Try and get that off. In fact, if I put it down on the board like this and push it, because I've cut a straight line, then I can pretty much assure that it's going to be nicely stuck evenly. And the beauty of hot glue is you don't have to wait a week. Just a few minutes while your fingers smolder. Now, is this starting to look like a plain fuselage or what? Pretty damn good, I think. And of course the next step would be to put this piece on the top, but we're not going to do that yet because then we couldn't get inside to put near the radio gear in, could we? So we'll leave putting the top on until a little later. But what we can do is find our tail, our horizontal stabilizer, because I think we'll glue that on the bottom. And that will become the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer. So that will be our next step. And before we do that, we've got to make an elevator out of it. And this is one of the great things about core flute because it's got built-in hinging. What I'll do is I'll just mark how far away I want my elevator, or how big I want my elevators. If I can find stuff on this table, every time I build stuff, you end up with a mess of rubbish. So I'm going to have some elevators. How wide will my elevators be? Well, this is three inches wide, so why don't I make the elevators one inch? We're not going to make, this is not going to be a 3D model, so we don't need great big huge elevators, just modestly sized ones. So I'll mark an inch on here with my tired old eyes. About there. And then I'll just put a mark along and I'll run my knife along. And I'm only going to cut through one side of the core flute because I'm going to use the core flute as a hinge. Get my trusty knife, like so. Just run through one flute, like that. Because now, as you can see, look, we have a hinged elevator, but it only goes one way, it won't go back that way. So, what we've got to do is just trim down the bits of the flute that poke out and that will give us a hinge that works both ways nice and light nice and easy and very very quick okay that's what I've done now look the elevator goes both ways try and get it where you see you can see it look at that it goes both ways and it's hinged how quick was that hinging job that was pretty damn clever wasn't it